For today's lesson, we are going to study all about Colloid What is a colloid? A colloid is a mixture with particles evenly scattered in the dispersed medium without settling down. It is made up of dispersed particles and the dispersion medium. Colloid has properties. First, the Tyndall effect. Tyndall effect is the effect of light scattering in a colloidal dispersion while showing no light in a true solution. This effect is used to determine whether a mixture is a true solution or a co This is how the Tyndall effect works. If you are going to light a solution, you will not see the beam of light because it is transparent. While in the mixture of water and milk, which is a colloid, you will see that the beam of light is visible and the light is scattered. Another property is the Brownian movement. This is the zigzag irregular motion exhibited by minute particles of matter when suspended in a fluid. So if you are going to look at the particles of the uh, colloid, you will see the um, zigzag movement of the particles. You can see this when you use a microscope. Here are some examples of colloids. Milk Gelatin, whipped cream, smoke, foam, mayonnaise, toothpaste, peanut butter, and ice cream. So as you can see, most of the colloids can be used as food for body care, for cleaning, and
let's talk about cobbles. We'll look at some key properties and common examples. A colloid is a type of mixture that falls somewhere between a homogeneous mixture and a heterogeneous mixture. So, first off, a touch of review on types of mixture. Here's a homogeneous mixture. This is more commonly called a solution. An example is sugar dissolved in water. In a solution, the dissolved particles are very tiny. They might be atoms, ions, or small molecules. And they spread out evenly, giving solutions a uniform appearance. A solution looks like one substance. And it doesn't separate out or settle out. On the other hand, in a heterogeneous mixture, the parts don't dissolve. Here is sand and water. You can see the distinct parts here. Now, if you stir things up, the different substances may hang in the water for a moment and make what's called a suspension, where the parts always settle back out again. And the particles here are relatively big. You can see them. So a colloid falls somewhere between a solution and a heterogeneous suspension. We'll use an example to make this clear. We'll look at water in the air. Air is a homogeneous mixture of gases. There's mostly nitrogen and oxygen, but there's pretty much always some water molecules mixed into it. The molecules are too tiny to see, but we can zoom in. Here's the water. Because air is a homogeneous mixture, the parts don't settle. These molecules kind of float around, bumping into each other, but they never settle out. Now sometimes, we get so much water in the air that it makes raindrops. And they're so large that they do settle. The air can't support them, so gravity pulls them down. This is like how other heterogeneous mixtures settle out over time. But there's also an end Sometimes, there's just enough water in the air that tiny droplets form. Although these droplets are bigger than molecules, they're too small to settle. They just float there. But they're big enough to start reflecting light, just like this. So you can see this. When this happens, you get something called fog. Fog is a color. It's made of very tiny drops of water dispersed or spread out in the air. So that's what we mean when we say that colloids fall between homogeneous mixtures and heterogeneous mixtures. The particles have a size that is in between or intermediate. Like a homogeneous mixture, fog stays suspended. It doesn't settle out. But like a heterogeneous mixture, the particles are visible. You can see them. So, let's talk about the parts of a colloid. Colloids always have two main parts. We call these parts phases. Fog, the tiny droplets of water are one phase, and the air is another phase. There are technical terms for these two phases. The dispersed substance and the dispersion medium. In fog, the water droplets are the dispersed substance, and the air is the dispersion medium. The dispersed substance spreads out and kind of floats in the dispersion medium. Now, there are different types of columns. These depend on what the dispersion medium is and what the dispersed substance is. When you have liquid dispersed in a gas, like fog, you have a type of colloid called an aerosol. You might have heard that word before, maybe with like an aerosol spray can. Same as fog. Liquid is a dispersed substance, and air is the dispersion medium. Another type of colloid is smoke. Like fog, the dispersion medium is air. But with smoke, 
dispersed substance is salt. Tiny pieces of birch wood, rubber, paper. This type of colloid is also called an aerosol. Solid, dispersed, in gas. We can build kind of a table here for the different types of colloids. We talked about two types of aerosols. Liquid, dispersed in gas, stuff like fog, mist, disinfectant spray, and then solid dispersed gas. Examples are smoke as well as dust in the air. We'll look at a few more types of columns. Here is foam. Foam is a column where a gas is dispersed in a liquid medium. Think of whipped cream. If we looked at this foam very closely, we'd see tiny air bubbles dispersed through liquid cream. We'll add foam to our list of colors, gas and liquid. Shaving cream is another example of a foam. And foam can also be made by dispersing from gas or salt. That's how marshmallows are made, as well as polystyrene packing. Another important type of color is made by dispersing solid through a liquid. These might be called gels. Some common examples are glue, paint, and gelatin. Blood is also a color of solids dispersed in the liquid. Now, the last type of colloid that we're going to discuss is a little more complex than the others. An emulsion is a liquid substance dispersed in a liquid medium. Normally, these are two liquids that wouldn't dissolve in one another, like oil and vinegar. If you've ever used these in a salad dressing, you know they don't mix together. They are immiscible. One liquid would settle below the other, just like this. But if you add an egg yolk and mix them together using a blender, you get mayonnaise, which is a column. We call this type of colloid an emulsion. An emulsion is two immiscible liquids forming a colloid. In an emulsion, the immiscible liquids are often held together by a third substance called an emulsifying agent. That's the egg here. An emulsifying agent is a substance that can sort of interact with both of the liquids. It gets them to come together and stabilize them. by adding emulsions. Liquid dispersed in liquid. Milk is another good example of an emulsion. We can see general categories like aerosols, foams, gels, and emulsions. Notice that every one has the two phases we discussed. The dispersed substance in the dispersion medium. Now, we're going to talk about some of the characteristics of colloids. First off, how they interact with light. If you shine a light through a colloid like fog, you can see the beam. That's because the particles and colloids are big enough to reflect or scatter light. We have a name for this. We call this the Tyndall effect. Think about headlights in the fog or sunbeams. Maybe you've been to a concert or a laser light show. Did you notice that they fill the theater with smoke? Well, in order for you to actually see laser beams, they need to reflect off smoke, fog, or dust in the air. The Tyndall effect is one thing that separates colloids from solutions. A solution does not scatter. The particles are too small. So, when light through a solution like air or salt water, you can't see the beam. 